Hi everyone, in today's video, let's get started with multiplexer. We'll have a few videos on this topic covering basics of multiplexer, its Verilog code, followed by frequently asked interview questions. In this video, we shall see what a multiplexer is and where does it come to use. Since this will be our first Verilog code in this series, let's see the styles of modeling Verilog supports in this video, followed by Max coding in the next video. So, what is a MUX? It is a combinational circuit which has many data inputs and a single output. It propagates one input to the output depending upon the control or the select lines. The representation of a 4 is to 1 MUX is as shown here. It has 4 data inputs, 1 output and 2 select lines. Let us consider the data inputs to be I0, I1, I2 and I3. And initially let the select lines be 0 and 0. So when S1 and S0 are 0, the data at 0, 0 that is I0 is propagated to output Y. So Y is equal to I0 when S1 is 0 and S0 is 0. So S1 bar, S0 bar, I0. However, when S1 is 0 and S0 is 1, the data at 0, 1 that is I1 is propagated to output S1 bar, S0, I1. When S1 is 1 and S0 is 0, the data at 1, 0 that is I2 is propagated to output. So Y is I2 when S1 is 1 and S0 is 0. So S1, S0 bar, I2. When both are 1, S1 and S0, then data at 1, 1, I3 is propagated to output. So Y is I3 when S1 and S0 both are 1, S1, S0, I3. The final equation for the MUX is as follows. In general, for a MUX with n input lines, we will have log n to base 2 selection lines. So here, for 4 input lines, we have log 4 to base 2, that is 2 selection lines. Suppose we had 8 input lines, we would have log 8 to base 2, that is 3 selection lines. Multiplexers are one of the most frequently used circuits. Let us see a real world example of where a multiplexer is used so that you can correlate. You must have all used one or the other microcontroller to interface some sensors in your project. Let us suppose you are using Raspberry Pi and you want to interface an LED to it and you want to use pulse width modulation and vary the brightness of the LED. The first thing you would do is browse for the pinout and the datasheet of Raspberry Pi. Let us look for Raspberry Pi's datasheet. You will look for alternate functionalities of GPIO to find PWM. You find that every pin has so many functions like suppose you want you see PWM in the pin 18 but you also see there are other functions for pin 18. The same is the case when you see in the so you decide to connect your LED to GPIO 18. It also has other functionalities like PCM, SPI along with our P required PWM. How can we select our required functionality? This is done by a multiplexer present within the chip at the GPIO input. It takes the internal peripheral functionality as the input. As you can see here, all the functionalities the alternate functionalities for the GPIO pin are taken as input. Suppose PCM, SPI, PWM are the functionalities. All of them are given as input and this MUX that is present within the chip at every of GPIO pin selects one among these functionalities according to the select lines and gives that to the output pin. Particularly, if we see the MUX at pin 18, the alternate functionalities mentioned in pin 18, the PCM, SPI, PWM, 
or all the inputs to the MUX and the select line which is obtained from a register which is GPIO alternate functionality register will select PWM to your output and this selection can be done by programming the GPIO alternate functionality register from your application code. So this register content acts as a select line for the MUX. So when you write in your code that the GPIO mode is PWM, it will set the select line so that PWM circuit is connected to your GPIO pin 18. Now that you understand the behavior of MUX, let us see how to write a Verilog code for the multiplexer. Verilog allows us to design our circuit at four different abstraction levels by offering four coding styles. Switch level modeling, in which the circuit is designed at transistor level by mentioning the NMOS, PMOS or CMOS interconnections for the circuit design. The gate level modeling, here the circuit is implemented in terms of logic gates and their connections. We instantiate gate primitives provided by Verilog for the gates. The data flow modeling. In this style, instead of mentioning at gate level, the manner in which the data flows, that is the actual functionality of the circuit in terms of wiring connections and logic operations is mentioned. Continuous assignment statement is used. As you can see, instead of instantiating the NOT gate, you are writing OUT is equal to NOT IN, this is actual functionality and you are in assigning NOT of IN to OUT. It is like a wiring connection that always connects a negation of IN to OUT by using continuous assignment. Behavioral modeling. Here, the design is implemented at algorithmic level where we only need to know the functionality of the circuit and represent it like how we write algorithms in C language using conditional statement, switch case, etc. within the procedural always block that is provided by Verilog. These styles that are mentioned are in increasing order of abstraction. That means that the amount of design detail to be known is maximum at the switch level where the transistor level implementation must be known and the amount of design detail to be known is minimum at the behavioral level which is easiest to code. No matter which coding style you choose, the behavior of the circuit is the same but the synthesis output will differ. You will understand more about Verilog coding styles and when to use which coding style in the next video. Since MUX is the first circuit that we are designing, let us see how to code MUX using all the coding styles and compare them. If you feel that this content is useful and informative, do like the video, this will encourage us. Also give us feedback on any other content you would like to learn in this series in the comment section below. Thank you.